This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Hi, I'm Richard Gershon, the host of In Legal Terms and a professor at the University of Mississippi School of Law. If you miss a live In Legal Terms episode, find our podcast, inlegalterms.mpbonline.org. And thanks for being with us today. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Um, And I'm here with my producer, Abram Nanny. And we're going to be talking about bullying, but specifically I want to talk about adult bullying today. I know you've heard on our other Southern Remedy shows in the recent past shows about bullying that children have to deal with and teens, and certainly that is a huge problem. But most of us encounter bullies at at specific points in our lives, and and I, I dare say either you have been bullied or you have been a bystander or maybe the bullier. And, you know, while many times we believe that bullying only happens throughout childhood, unfortunately, it doesn't always stop once we become adults. We really talk a whole lot less about bullying in adulthood, and it may be because it carries such a great stigma with potentially higher consequences, and we as adults maybe are even embarrassed to talk about the fact that we feel like perhaps we are being bullied. But bullying is bad for the bullied. It's bad for the bully and the bystander. So what can we do? How can we move along? How, how, first of all, how do you even recognize it? And, and so I think, um, Actually, uh, we all probably have stories out there uh, about it. And what I think maybe today I'd like for us to do is not just talk about the stories that have happened, but how you have dealt with it, or maybe if you're still struggling with it, how you can gain the support that you need to to learn to better deal with it. So any time during this show. The earlier, the better. I'd love to hear from you. As I've said, I always love to hear from you because I think it enhances the show. And and perhaps it encourages other people to sort of think not just about learning the information that we're throwing out, but to also deal with some of the issues that have come up For you, you know, adult bullying is often a sneakier thing. It can be. It can be more masked. And like I said, it it may feel shameful and, and you may doubt yourself and wonder, did I just make all this up? And I, I will say that that in the past for even me, I, as I have moved through life, there have been times when I wondered, gosh, was that snarky remark real? Am I being overly sensitive? Is there something else? Um, Abram, you're nodding, and I think you're probably feeling the same way, that this has occurred for you. Well, right? yeah, I... I often leave a conversation wondering, did I really have to say something that snarky? Uh-huh. Uh, I, I have a very sarcastic attitude when I'm comfortable with people. So I'm like, sometimes I could I could calm down. I could chill out a little bit. So Well, and is that really bullying? I think what we need to do is sort of get to the to the point where we understand that that maybe a, a sarcastic um, or snarky remark or a quick comeback is is really not bullying. What it what it might be is a little more sarcasm than some people understand. Some people love that in conversational skills. Some don't, um, but. I think the bottom line is bullying is is truly when it's something ongoing and and meant to be hurtful and 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 many times meant to take somebody down a notch and 
perhaps can be hurtful or are causing shame. And that's that's where and it's typically something that is repeated. It's where somebody is really focusing on you and going after you for whatever reason. And we can talk through that as we move along. But before we do that, let's go to our first caller. We have Brother Daniel in Pascagoula. Hi, Brother Daniel. Hey, what's going on? God bless Mississippi. Yes. God bless America. Yes. For the love we need now. Uh, let me read the definition of bullying. Okay. Bullying is a form of aggressive, aggressive behavior in which someone intentionally and repeatedly causes another person injury or discomfort. Bullying can take the form of physical contact, words, or more subtle actions. And right now, mm-hmm. being that tempers, tempers are flaring, uh, situations are happening, and right here, I'm glad it ain't, it ain't the Magnolia. You know, Magnolia, we've seen the past. Mm. But we're looking at a new future, and it's got a lot of love in it and a lot of real Christian, and not just Christian, but some of my Muslim brothers, some of my Jewish brothers that believe in peace and love, working together, knowing one another's cultures, my Italian, my Greek, my Irish, my German, my African-American, Puerto Rican. We are getting so diverse here, and I'm hoping we can be a light for the rest of the world. But I found that I had like three people this week, one parent, she felt herself being bullied by her own child. Mm, our it children can tend to pick up a lot of things. In, our children get to pick up a lot of things in school, and we have to be careful what they pick up because if they see other kids talk to their parents a certain way, they tend to latch on to that to find their answer what they want and start doing it to their parents. So we. We really got to work on this thing, bully. Bullying is a real thing right now. I'm telling you. It is. You know, got to think about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, thank you, Brother Daniel, and I agree with you. There, there are times, and I've seen this happen, too, when adult children will bully their older parents or that um, older parents will continue to do those those digging remarks and hurtful remarks to their adult children. So it happens in families. It happens in the workplace. It, it happens almost everywhere. We certainly hear about neighborhood issues that can be ongoing. And in fact, according to a survey that was done, Oh, gosh, back in the the early 2000s, and I would dare say the number has probably increased since then, uh, upwards of 31 percent of adults say that they have been bullied as adults. So that is sort of on par with what we're hearing from teenagers and, and children. So, again, like I said at the beginning of this show, it doesn't seem to go away, unfortunately. So let's let's go to our next caller. Thank you so much, Brother Daniel. I think you're right. We've got to understand it. Um, but let's hear from Rick in Mobile. Hi, Rick. Hi. You have Hi, some was... comments about your supervisor? Talk to us about that. Well, it's a, I, I grew up on the East Coast, mm-hmm. and uh, since moving to the South, Bullying seems to be a very pervasive way in the Deep South for supervisors or people in positions of power. It just seems to be accepted, if not encouraged, behavior. Hmm. Can you give us an example of what you're talking about, Rick? Because, yeah, I... I hear you. I think that many times we say, oh, the South is so incredibly polite. We're always so nice. But you don't always see that out there. And and sometimes that passive aggressive bullying, which can be to me the most subversive and at times the most hurtful. And and um, and sometimes it's very direct. So talk to us about what your situation or what you viewed. Uh, I've, I've I've worked on job sites and seen supervisors 
calling, screaming, screaming, calling employees retards, retarded people, something mm. like that, mm. at the top of their lungs. To the point where I was speaking to an electrician that worked for another company, and he said, I was going to suggest that my brother put in an application to come work with y'all's company, but y'all got a bad reputation. He said, uh, I worked at the same project that you guys were at, and I heard your supervisor on a daily basis screaming at the top of his lungs at the employees. Well, I will say that that's that speaks very terribly of the comp- the upper management in a company, because I think everyone who is listening will uh, agree with my words in that people do not do their best when they are being demeaned and yelled at, nor do they work to their best ability because they're chronically under stress, which is horrible for you. And so, uh, you know, why would you want to work well for a supervisor who is is being mean and aggressive and a name caller? So, so has anyone done anything about that? Has anyone stood up to him? Or I don't think this particular supervisor has ever even received a reprimand for his behavior. I could go into story after story about this fellow, but uh, I'm sure you guys don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I think the main thing that I, I want to say is that one of the premier ways to help manage bullying is for somebody to, one, call, call him on it, to let him know that this is unacceptable, and if possible, to go to management above him. That's that's what I would do, because uh, apparently this is an individual who has a long history of this kind of behavior. Now, what happened to him? You know, we can talk about insight and why bullies bully. We know that there was a model somewhere along the line that that showed him that this is a proper way to manage individuals. But anyone who teaches management skills will say it's the worst way to manage workers because they don't want to work well for you if that happens. And I would guess that there is a fairly high turnover rate in in that company. So, Rick, I would say, hopefully, I'd love to hear from other callers. I, I do know in in blue collar work, perhaps people expect individuals to be tougher and meaner. I, but I don't get that, and I don't understand it at all. And I know that it's not the best way to get high performing. Workers who are loyal and care about the company and want the company to pro- progress. It it may attract people who are just there to co- collect a paycheck. You know, yeah. I, I wonder. Yeah. And, and so, of course, one of the recommendations, Rick, and I will say – I know that there are, there are a lot of individuals who have construction companies who are often looking for excellent workers. And so one thing that you could do is, is look for another job. Um, and, and another thing, though, is I would definitely go to upper management. That person has to be called on that. That's not a good work environment. Yeah, I- I personally have spoken to the upper management of our company about that particular individual and said, look, this guy is is going to end up costing the company that I work for money. I said, sooner or later, somebody is going to sue the company for employee harassment if something's not done about it, if this guy's not even reprimanded. But, you know, as far as I know, nothing has ever been done to the guy. Nothing's ever been said. Nothing's ever been done. Yeah. All right. Well, has anyone ever turned to him and say, stop calling names like that? Do not call that person 
a retard or an imbecile, that is not nice. Has there been anyone there, the bystander of the bullying, to call him on it? Maybe not. I just got on my lunch break. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Um, okay, Rick, I know I'm holding you up, and I appreciate you calling in and talking about this. But, but two things. Go back to the upper management. Gain support behind you to say this is not okay in the workplace. And then perhaps have more than one person to gather stand up to to the supervisor and say you're talking inappropriately and we can't work under these conditions anymore so that's what i would encourage you to do having to work under those conditions are stressful they're bad not just for your mental health but for your physical health so rick i I hope that helped a little bit um and I hope it maybe will empower you. I'd love to hear a call back sometime to see if this has continued or what has happened with this. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for your call. You know, we talk a lot about how our children are bullied, our teens are cyber bullied, and certainly that is real, a huge problem. But what we often don't talk about is the fact that adults are bullied many times in the home, in the workplace, in the neighborhood, it it can occur anywhere. And the different ways people bully are fairly diverse, unfortunately. Uh, it can be true just physical bullying where somebody is just pushing someone around, physically attacking them, threatening to harm them physically. It can be... Um, a more tangible bullying where they intimidate people through financial issues, withholding money, uh, trying to make someone feel needy because of them, refusing, maybe even in the home, a spouse refusing to give money that's needed as a mode of control. Certainly, we all know about verbal bullying, and that's probably a really common way people just verbally insult individuals for whatever reason. And it can be multifactorial that they can find ways to attack. And then the one I mentioned earlier that sometimes is the one where you start self-doubting and wondering if this is real is that passive-aggressive or covert bullying, those backhanded compliments that continue over and over and over again, or that call about something about you or your physical experience, appearance that, that then you start having some self doubt like oh you you cut your hair why did you do that instead of you know saying i like your hair or saying something about your physical size it looks like you've put on some pounds there haven't you and it's the same person always calling something negative to your appearance that that kind of passive aggressive Even worse is behind your back, gossiping and telling stories on you. And then, of course, I already mentioned cyberbullying, and you all know a lot about that. All right. Well, we're going to go back to the phones because we have Eddie in South Haven with a comment. Hi, Eddie. Thanks for calling. Yes, ma'am. Great show. Thank you. Uh, I I retired from a nationally known delivery company. I won't call the names. Uh, just that they're brown. <laughs> okay. I had that uh, uh, unfortunate uh, <clears throat> opportunity to meet a a, uh, a supervisor who demanded that once I finish my work, I go help somebody else. Hmm. Said, well, that's not the policy. <laughs> right. You finish every man for himself and a woman. <laughs> Do your job and go home. So I did it once. Out of, out of a favor, because I knew the other, other driver who was having trouble just starting out. No problem. But that was kind. Driver, oh, no, no, I'm not going to do it. No, mm-hmm. you you find somebody else. Well, well, you know, 
he went all out. Was, oh, stop right there. Stop right there. I'm going to punch out, and I'm going to meet you in the parking lot. Hello. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, guess what? Guess what? <laughs> no more bullying. I, and he got to be my best friend. Maybe because I'm 6'2 and 225, and he was 5'7 and 142. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> Could be. So I, I passed this on to my sons mm-hmm. in high school. You see somebody bullying another person, you go up there and you be that person's friend. And guess what's going to happen? Later in life, they're going to thank you. Yeah. And you stood up for me. Yeah. Thank you. That's how that works. So, hey, I confront my guys. I, I confront the bullies. That. Hey, I, don't, I don't have any trouble. <laughs> so, I, the gentleman just got off the phone. I sympathize with him. But, hey, hey, mano y mano. Yeah. And I had no more problems. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, Eddie, the the psychologist and the the therapist out there who who do talk about how to deal with bullies, confrontation is is often up there in now not confrontation in yelling and screaming, but just standing up, turning around, looking them in the eye, saying directly, No. That is not appropriate for you to do and to let them know that you are not going to back down. Now, let me just say that there's a little caveat to this because, Eddie, you are a big man and that that smaller guy may have been afraid to physically confront you, but... There might be an individual out there who is being bullied, who do, who who really could be harmed if it gets to a physical altercation. And so it's really important to make sure that that individuals stay safe and that they have someone else. And Eddie, I love the lesson that you have have. Uh, taught to your children, to your 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 boys, I guess, and hopefully, if you have daughters, daughters too. But to to stand up for others who are being bullied, because being that bystander, I've told this story before on radio. I was a bystander, and I remember it in the fifth grade. A, a young woman was being bullied about just being made unmerciful fun about her clothes. And that they were they were clearly of poor quality and and the child could not help it, obviously. And I knew it. And I stood in the background because I was a bit afraid to stand up for that young girl because I was afraid then they'd turn on me. And I've smarted about that all my life. And I will tell you that I am one who has taught my children, all, all five of them, to stand up for anyone who's being bullied. And if you need to mount a crowd to stand up, if you feel like you could then be put in danger. So thank you for that story. I think it's real. It's That's exactly one way that we can deal with it, right? Uh, all right. Thanks for the call. Take a call. Okay. Thanks for calling, Eddie. That, you know, I th- if we can just all say, don't tolerate it, we need to not tolerate bullying. I think the world would be a better place. I know our state would. And I, I, I will say, Mississippi is called the hospitality state, and we do have a lot of very kind people here. But we do still have a lot of people out there who are not as kind as they could possibly be. And so we need to all work on that. I'd like to hear from more of you about maybe situations that you were able to change or maybe something that is still ongoing and happening to you and how maybe you would like to get some advice on how to approach it. You can give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672-7464. You know... I think probably we've all heard stories about individuals standing up to bullies and the bully, the bullies back down. 
And, you know, research has shown that the truth is, is that many times individuals who bully are insecure and are individuals who don't have a good, strong self-esteem. And so they feel the need to pick on people who seem weaker than they are to point out that they're big, strong people. Abram, I see you nodding. You you think maybe? Well, I just like, I, I know that a lot of bullying is very mental and emotional. <clears throat> Or yeah. like within the psychology of the bully, um, because like I know, I'm I'm a fairly big guy. Like people, I always have been. I've never been physically bullied or anything, but that doesn't stop people from you know, like people will make fun of you for anything. So, <clears throat> like a lot of that is just a mental insecurity that they that the bully themselves have, like you said. Um, so it, it can it can really you can chalk it up to just about anything. Um, can can lead to someone uh, just trying to put down others for the sake of lifting themselves up in their own mind. Yeah, it's a really bad way to do it, though, Absolutely. because bullying feels bad ultimately for for the bully. You you that kind of feeling raises blood pressure, heart rate. That aggression uh, is n- does nothing for elevating the the happy um, endorphins or hormones, and so we need to keep in mind it's it's truly bad for everybody. But you know the other thing that we probably need to talk about is the the difference between harassment and bullying, and if they are really the same. Because both of them are hurtful and destructive, and both can be comparable. But we'll we'll talk about that difference in a few minutes. But before we do that, I want to go to David and Raymond in here. He did something wonderful I want him to tell us about. Oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, David. So- Hi. Like my experience may be a little different from the others, but and maybe not. But let me tell you what happened. Uh, I was asked to speak at the local elementary school, and I was very shocked that they told me to pick my own subject. Just whatever I wanted to talk to, just talk to the kids. And so, but the parents were there. with those type of meetings where the parents were allowed to come. And so when I got up, I chose the subject of bullying. And I started off by saying, have you ever thought, what, a, what, is my child the bully at school? Is it, have you ever even thought of that? Because most of the time you think about someone else being bullied. Right. But, but I, I added, and I said, parents, I'm talking to you right now. Is, do you, what, you would be appalled if you knew your child was a bully probably. Yeah, I don't think that's anything you would be proud of. And I said, but, but you know, this is a serious matter because we have children that are committing suicide. How, how much more serious can it get? Children are going home and killing themselves because of what someone did or said to them at school. And I said, that right there is reason enough to make go home, have a conversation with your children, try to find out from talking to them if they're the bully. And if, they're, and, and if they're not the bully, and then ask them about what some of the other callers have said about picking up and standing up for people who are not, who are not able or capable or, or uh, for lack of a better word, brave enough to stand up for themselves. I think that is wonderful, and that's important because so many times when parents are contacted by schools, I know that often there's some pushback of parents saying, not my child. My child would never do that. My child is too kind. But if there is a a child or who has said that they're being bullied by a particular individual, and that's your child, or if, if a teacher calls and has witnessed something, then I think 
it's really important that we all, as parents, make sure that we really try to address things. And, you know, if it gets to be a he said, she said, instead of trying to be the detective and search down exactly what happened for that particular incident, the best thing to do, and David, I think you would agree with me on this one, is to sit the child down and say, whether this situation happened or not, we don't even have to talk about it, because I want you to know that I will not tolerate you bullying anyone, so I don't want to hear about it, and I will not tolerate anyone bullying you. And in addition to that, give them the bystander talk. Talk to them about why you should never let that happen to another child. That way, you don't have to go through the, no, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Say, it doesn't even matter if it happened or not. If, if there was any inkling that somebody thought it might have, then keep that in mind. Don't, don't ever have behavior that could be confused. And here are the other things you need to keep in mind. The, these are the other kindness things you need to do. So, David, I, I, I congratulate you for going to speak in, to an elementary school and to, for choosing that topic because I, it's almost a topic we can't talk about enough uh, also, I, I will say this. We were talking to a group of teachers on a, on a web conference the other day, and, and I brought this up not because I think we need to have tougher, tougher people who can take bullying. <laughs> I said, D, I've heard others say, oh, come on, we never talked about bullying before. Everybody's just so sensitive. Why don't we just have everybody toughen up and and be able to take it? And And of course, as you would imagine, there were several people who came back and said, yeah, but what are we doing to our society? Are we making everybody unkind? Why do we have to be tough and mean to be able to live today? Why can't we be kinder? I don't know. David, what do you think about that? I was the type of kid that if I was mean to somebody or did something, I would not be able to sleep at night. It would bother me so much. And I'm just shocked and appalled at how some people get mistreat and make another kid feel so horrible that they don't, it doesn't even, even phase them. Right. I can remember, I can remember being, I can remember kids getting that lunch money taken from them. I knew one kid in particular uh, that lived on my street. He was take he was, they were taking his lunch money every day. So he stopped bringing money to school and brought his lunch to school, and then the bully started taking his lunch from him. And so, yeah, that's so terrible. And I've heard those situations over and over again. And why did that continue? Why wasn't there a teacher or another child that witnessed that and said, wait, you can't do that. That is not okay. You cannot do that. And until we get our society to learn how, to stand up for the underdog, we're going to continue to have that issue. Whether we're calling that bullying or harassment, and like I said, I'll talk about that in a few minutes, what the difference is, it's, it's really one and the same. It's still taking advantage of an underdog. And, you know, the child who's being bullied, should he turn around and say, no, you cannot have my money? And teaching him to do that. So, you know, sadly, he may not have ever gone home and told his parent because his parent may have fussed at him for allowing that to happen. And then he would have been in trouble on both ends. So you never know what's going on in those situations. Thanks for being with us today on Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Abram Nanny. We're talking about adult bullying. 
and what it does to the bullier, the bullied, and the bystander, it's all bad. Most individuals who experienced any part of any of that have long-term memories that are not good, and it can be bad for your mental health. Certainly being constantly bullied is is something that can cause depression, and as one of our callers said, can even push someone to suicide if they feel like they just cannot escape it. So that's why it's so important for us to continue to bring this topic up, make sure that we're not allowing it to happen, not in the workplace, not in the home, not out in the neighborhood, not anywhere we are. We need to make sure that we are recognizing it and and standing up against it. So just as I mentioned before the break, the difference between harassment and bullying, and and I'd like to hear, listeners, your thoughts about this, because I'm not sure that we have to have two different terms. But bullying and harassment are similar because they're, they're both about power and control, and they are there intentionally to hurt or harm somebody, And often there's a disproportionate power between the victim and the bully, okay? The the difference between bullying and harassment, though, is that when the bullying behavior is directed at a target who belongs to what we now call a protected class, so that would be someone... Uh, someone's race, if you're going after them because of their race, their color, their religion, their sex, their sexual preference, their age, their disability, their national origin. I've always viewed uh, the difference between harassment and bullying as uh, I've always viewed harassment being more, you know, a supervisor or a, you know, a higher up authority bullying or being rude to or excluding the someone who is under them, whereas bullying I've always viewed as more peer to peer type oh. of thing. But I mean like that's that's just my thought on it. That's just how I viewed it. That's no official definition. Yeah. And and if you look at at in in some workplaces, there are definitely policies against workplace harassment. Many times, though, if you look at the policies against that workplace harassment, it is tar- it's, it specifically mentions race, color, religion, sex, age, all those things I just talked about. So, and bullying certainly, as I hear what you're saying, harassment is is someone. It seems like it might be more prevalent in the workplace when there is an individual that is over you. And bullying can be peer-to-peer, but bullying can also, as one of our callers, uh, early callers called in, it can be, you know, same race, same sex, same even size, but but, uh, a boss over someone in the workplace. Yeah, that definitely that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I always have have had a little bit of difficulty in separating the two terms because harassment is really bullying. It really is. It's just saying, is it worse because of race, sex, color, et cetera, or is it really the same? I guess it really doesn't matter. It's not right. None of it's right. And we have to learn how to do a better job dealing with it. So listeners, feel free to call in and and comment on that. Um, you can call us now, one eight seven seven mpb ring We have time for other callers. That's 877-672-7464. See, what I found on Microsoft being uh, the difference between harassment and bullying is that harassment is more clearly defined in legislature than bullying is. So hmm. I guess 
legal action can be taken or more direct legal action can be taken because of harassment um or it could just be a more right legalistic word for bullying than <laughs> bullying would be yeah I think in the workplace, that's certainly something that there are a lot of workplace policies. I know at the University of Mississippi Medical Center, we, we really have very clear guidelines and, and we, we even have programs that we, modules that we have to attend about it because it is a big issue. And that's why I thought today we needed to remind everybody that bullying and or harassment does not just occur in children. And there are many an unhappy adult who's walking around, probably mostly in a job place, but but I would say in homes, we see that. You know, family member to family member who is who is making a very unhappy home place for a, a spouse or another member or perhaps even a parent that because it's it's ongoing. So, you know, so how do we deal with this? I think I want to spend the next few minutes talking about some ways. We've already talked about the the turn face the individual. It is much harder much harder not to have empathy for an individual if they're looking you clear in the eye. It's much harder to be as direct and hurtful. That's why the cyberbullying has gotten so predominant. You're not looking in anybody's eye. I think it's the most cowardly way to say bad things about individuals is to do it in a text in an email, in an Instagram or Snapchat or whatever you're doing, it's cowardly to do that. It's just like the cowardly breakup. You know, we the text breakups we hear about occasionally. That's just being a chicken. And so uh, I think if we keep reminding people how ridiculously inappropriate that is, maybe it would embarrass people into stopping the, the bullying behavior. So, all right, let's talk a little bit other than turning and looking at someone, standing up to them and telling them very directly, this is not okay. I'm not going to allow you to treat me this way. Um, The other thing, the advice from all the experts is to pick and choose your battles. Choose how to react. You know, if... One one method that I talk to kids often about is to just plain ignore it. You know, if somebody says something that's mean or hurtful to you, act like you just absolutely did not hear it. Keep a neutral face. Turn your back. Do whatever you can to let them know that they have just, whether they have or not, become a good actor. Teach them that you've done nothing to me. You have no power over me. You did not create a single emotion in me. So that's probably the quickest, easiest thing to do if, if you can steal yourself to do it. And, you know, as we do with young children who are throwing a temper tantrum, we always say with what we call planned ignoring, if you ignore it, the behavior may escalate. If you keep ignoring it, it may escalate a little more. But if you keep on ignoring it, It'll go away because then there's no secondary gain and everybody around who is witnessing it will say, oh, my goodness, this is ridiculous. So to go away. So that planned ignoring is is really one of those really good things to use. Um, The other one that, you know, if there's any way you can escape it. Uh, turn away. Move your desk to another place. Limit your interactions. If it's a, a cohort at work, um, just don't go around them when they are there. You know, you can choose who you associate with during break time and other times. So make sure that you step away as best you can. If you're in the workplace, 
be sure to document offenses that are happening because that's really important, especially if you're going to move forward on on any further issue and if it's become intolerable and something where you may need to go to the upper management for it. All right, we have a caller, and I want to get to Ruth in Yazzie City before we we um, end the show. Hi, Ruth. Hi. Um, many years ago, a friend of mine was the only person of his race and age working with a, a crew, a uh, maintenance crew, and um, his co- uh, co-workers would constantly tease each other because they knew it made him uncomfortable. This was many years ago before homosexuality was so uh, accepted. Mm -hmm. These men would grab each other's butts and or they would whistle at men they saw on the street just pretending to be gay, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And and they they were all, like I said, of a different nationality and uh, it, it and they knew it made my friend uncomfortable. He was uh, older, white, and mm-hmm. German, and mm-hmm. and they and I believe, and it's kind of happened to me a little bit as an older worker. And I think they would like to make you uncomfortable enough to quit, and they can get somebody in there, you know, that's more like them or something, or maybe it's just yeah for entertainment. <laughs> Well, right. It may be it, uh, it it may be that they're getting some positive feedback from the bystander who's standing there laughing when they are doing something unkind or or mean. And again, Ruth, to you and um, and anyone else out there who is experiencing that, I would just say I think it is absolutely fine to turn around to look at them and say with a stern voice stop talking like that that's not appropriate stay away from me and i i I really do and if it continues to report it so okay my final words that i'm going to say about this is that we all need to practice compassion in all of this Hurt people hurt people is something that I've read. And so, sadly, we need to think about that as we're moving through life, to to think about what could have happened to that individual. Well, thank you once again. Thanks so much to our listeners and callers. You always make the show. Southern Remedy is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio, and funding is provided in part by a grant from the University of Mississippi Medical Center and support from listeners just like you. Listen to this show again if you'd like or any other past podcast on your favorite app. Just search Southern Remedy, Relatively Speaking. This show is a production of MPB Think Radio and engineered by my producer, Abram Nanny and call screener um, Jermaine Flood. Jermaine Flood, yes. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. This is an MVB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mvbonline.org or download the MVB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.